go after being different don't go after being the best because when you go after being the best you're kind of competing right when you when you are different you don't need to compete with anybody people will come to you for what you provide and you will be the only person who provide that welcome to a brand new episode of wish i knew that before i'm your host amit pandey and here we bring on guests from different walks of life to discuss ideas answer questions that can directly help a young adult navigate the journey of life a bit better our guest for today's show is a 24 years old choreographer dancer based in pune former co-founder of garv dance a much loved and celebrated bollywood dance group which started with a mission to teach authentic bollywood dance in los angeles He came to United States in 2014 to study business administration at USC with a desire to work on his dream of being an entrepreneur, building his own university someday which would bridge the gap between what's being taught in schools to what actually matters in real life. Little did he know that he would end up meeting his lost love after 3 years. Dancing. <laughs> he got involved in the Bollywood dance group Zeher. and not just led it as a captain but also went on to set a record of winning the best male lead four times in one national competition season but still somewhere he had this feeling of not being good enough with no desire to pursue dancing as a career he kept working on his education dream but life had something else planned for him when his dance video on the song makhana went viral and his dms comments got flooded with love appreciation and sometimes marriage proposals <laughs> giving him back the confidence that he is not that bad after all till date he has collaborated with some big names in the bollywood dance community like team nach rupesh bani and many more Being on the Garf team and having hours of long deep conversations with him in my opinion what truly sets him apart is him being a dancer who is also a good leader with a growth mindset humility and lifelong learning as his core values so please help me in welcoming a dancer a leader a teacher who through his art and work ethic aims to inspire educate and entertain a true believer in measuring his success by the impact he had by the hearts that he touched the ever so charming rohit jethwani aka junior j2 <laughs> hey <laughs> that was such a good introduction i literally have goosebumps i'm not kidding like, I, i felt like i was in my school auditorium <laughs> like I was listening to someone introducing me as a chief guest or something. That's my dream one day, you know, ah. being invited by my school as a chief guest at like the graduation ceremony. So it's like really felt like that. No, so thanks for this. Such a power-packed uh, introduction. It 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 just motivates me to a new level now. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right. So, did you my introduction to you first happened through your Makna video? Uh, when ranveer aka beer biceps he gave you the shout out and i stalked you on your instagram after watching that video that who's this guy and then i saw that you are in usc and i had to meet you then girl dance team audition happened i remember when i came for the first audition even though you had the other team members like sanjana and few other uh, of our friends on the group and you guys performed for us i just couldn't take my eyes of you you had this confidence this panache this style this not giving any damn attitude that i was like dude this guy has some he is different but what i also noticed was uh, you are a heavy dancer 2 years back even i was a bit conscious about my weight i was 85 kg and and you know, you have seen me i'm 53 and for me it was a lot of weight i had a lot of confidence issues to be honest i want to know that you right now you have this confidence panache this style this not giving a damn attitude but did your weight ever bother you in your dancing journey as well as in your life yes like 100% i think that's such a huge topic and i think a lot of dancers out there artists out there are just so scared 
you know, who who feel that they are overweight and they're just so scared to go out there and, you know, perform because they feel they don't have the confidence or they feel that you need to be of a certain fit of a, or like a certain body type to, you know, pursue dance as a career. Um, or maybe society makes them think that way, right? But that's totally incorrect. You have some of the best dancers in the world who are still overweight and not in shape. Um, so for me, it was, so for me, it was like a very, um, initially it was a challenging journey while I was at Shah Magdavar's uh, academy, while I was training with him, I think I was in the 10th grade or something. And then like, and, and then after that, I went to a boarding school. So I really never continued training with the academy anymore, but a huge part of like the academy was uh, dancing professionally at shows. Hmm. Um, now when you dance professionally at shows, costumes are not provided by you. Costumes are provided by the company. Hmm. So oftentimes you don't fit into costumes. And like, hmm. that's when like the moment of embarrassment comes in. I literally remember there was this show called Commonwealth Youth Games. It was 500 dancers in, uh, in Pune. It was Commonwealth Youth Games 2008. And it was the first time that where like such a huge, you know, uh, sporting event was hosted in Pune and Shamak was given the, op- um, Shamak was given the opportunity to perform at the closing ceremony. So it was Shamak, his troop, his like close troop, which like his Bombay instructors, plus like 500 dancers from Pune. So I got a chance to be part of this opportunity as well, which means 500 costumes. That's ridiculous. Right. Wow. And like they were providing costumes to us. I still remember like, I could not fit in. Like all my friends fit in like very comfortably. They were taking pictures and they were taking selfies, you know, because like, uh, because they're getting ready for the show. And I just could not fit in the costume. I think that was just really, I just felt very embarrassed um, to like a huge extent. And that affected me a lot. And then to an extent as well, I saw that I could not get promoted enough in the company to like a higher batch or like maybe like, you know, reach the instructor level, mainly because of my body size. As much as, you know, everybody's super nice and Eric, as much as like everybody is like, you know, wants to be, you know, the best person that they can be. Um, sometimes industry, you know, requires a certain level of body fit, you know, mm. for you to be performing in front of camera, for you to be performing in front of stages, you know, for you to be performing at IFA or like Stardust Awards, right. you know, um, and like those opportunities would, you know, was something that I had never, you know, gotten a chance to experience because of my weight and that demotivated me a lot. So I think like, you know, I pushed away from dancing, you know, I'd like to put, I pushed dancing away because of my weight. Uh, but then slowly as like, like, as I started getting back into it in high school, um, I was able to run the school fest closing ceremony and opening ceremony. And there were like seven performances, got a chance to, you know, choreograph and put up seven shows. But again, like, you know, like those are like, again, very like small school events that you really get a chance. So it's not like a opportunity where you're really like, you know, out there and like it's, it's in the real world where you're actually proving yourself or we're getting real feedback. Right. Um, and then as time, you know, progressed, when I met USC Zahir uh, at the University of Southern California, that's when I reconnected with dancing. I think it was like three years later because 11, 12 in the first year of college, I was in Paris. Uh, and like while, like, like, like while I was in Paris, I didn't get a chance to dance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like while I came back to USC in my second year of college, that's when things kicked off again. And I think the biggest confidence booster was like at auditions, um, the, the captains of, of Zahir didn't have any negative feedback. They were just like, whoa, like, what is this? You know, that yeah. like, first of all, you're heavy to really impress us. And I think that was a huge confidence booster being like, okay, yeah, you know, it's been a while since I've started, you know, like since I've reconnected with dance, but there are people over here that still respect you for who you are, you know, mm-hmm. and they don't want you to be in a certain way, but they will accept you for who you are. And I think like, uh, that's what pushed me and motivated me. Since then, I've... I've only felt a little embarrassed when it comes to costumes because <laughs> like it's like, I think, I think that just happened in the first year. In the first year, I was very embarrassed with costumes, right. but it's fine. Like, you know, nobody cares. Like nobody judges. Uh, like, like at least what mattered was nobody within the team judged. Nobody cared. And like, as years passed, like my second year on the team and then my third year, which I was captain, Nobody cared. By the third year, like I was comfortable to stand shirtless in front of my entire team. Aye. And nobody cared that this is body hair, this is body fat, this is like this stretch mark, that stretch mark. Because like I realized that is common for everybody. It's normal. It's not abnormal to like have such things, right? And I think like once I started getting comfortable with this culture of like, you know, accepting a body, that's when I was just like, no, uh, you can still dance having, you know, you know, having a body that's not like the society fit you know, society. body that like people really, yeah, society nice. fit body that people like really talk about. Um, and then 
when the when the first video went viral i think that boosted my confidence to a new level and like it it actually gave me like that sense of feeling that okay you know i can pursue this as a full time career um so i think like the whole journey of dance of of kind of kind of leaving the academy and then reconnecting 3 years back has just been this journey of converting your weakness into your like your biggest strength and now being overweight and dancing with energy is now my biggest strength you <laughs> know it's I... it's crazy because um because there's so many people who messaged after the makta video and then like many videos after that saying that this is the first time i'm seeing someone who's so overweight and who dances and like it it inspires me to believe that i do not need to have a fit body to get up and dance and there like so many messages that come like this and like when when messages like those come and i'm like that is you know sense of like you know satisfaction and success you know that's yeah. a sense of happiness that i don't think any anything can replace you know no monetary value no follow count all that's like just very short term and temporary but like that's what like really matters the most um, yeah. so yeah man and like um it's been it's been an amazing journey ever since and now i'm very proud of my body i'm happy the way that i think is such a powerful story j2 because uh, you know a lot of times people say adults are actually childs which have some traumas that still uh, is not healed you taking this journey where you are a capable dancer you have trained from 4 year when you were 4 years and going through this journey of actually working on your skills but still there is somewhere that someone can get under your skin and still overcoming that going out and reclaiming your position today where you are it is such a fascinating and inspiring journey i would say and you are leading the way for a lot of other people who who feel that it's it's their weight and and they are conscious and you can be overweight uh, it's it's not that we are pro- we are proponents of you should be overweight and it's about accepting yourself it's about respecting yourself it's about respecting the things that really matter I- i'm curious like any messages that you remember that really really touched you oh j2 you know what you changed my life i went on to do this because i remember you have mentioned few messages recently i was actually just replying to an email so on that new email someone just wrote like a very long email talking mm-hmm. about you know how uh, her own dad thinks that she can't that she can't dance because she's overweight Whoa. right so like it's not just a society problem the problem starts at home you know where sometimes you you feel like like these people ha- you know how sometimes there's always this pressure f- you know from the parent side because they do come from a separate generation there's always this pressure from parents like like log kya kahenge or like you know what will people think about it or like how will she fit in society or like what will i tell my close you know friend community being like ha meri beti dancer hai <laughs> you know yeah. and like uh, you know how will i face them so i think that that's a huge problem in society where like you know people just you know have to find themselves to like meet these so called rules that like are not really written anywhere <laughs> you know <laughs> and and like she just messaged me and i was just like yo you know it's okay uh, just it's fine you know like just keep training keep keep working hard it doesn't matter yeah. your your weight doesn't matter you can you know your body will move the way you want it to move you know you don't have to fit a certain type to make it move a certain way so like that was one message that like came through email but like most most generic message have most generic messages have been around the fact that you know hey i watched this video i'm super inspired i i stopped dancing because i got fat because of an injury or because i just started eating unhealthy all because of like you know bad lifestyle habits um, but after watching the video i'm inspired and i'm going to go back to dancing again and then they would send a video being like hey do you think you could give me feedback on this um i look really fat and i'm dancing but it's okay i don't care um you know i have the confidence that if you can do it then even i can do it and i think like that message is just is just so <laughs> touching it's like what yeah it's just like i'm spending time over here <laughs> you know i don't think i like i like like i don't care about anything else like this is where i'm spending yeah. the most time yeah, yeah. that's fab bro and 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 that's why you know we need more artists to actually be authentic to themselves their art because you never know like you are right now in pune and making videos from there but your art is getting consumed by someone in us somewhere someone somewhere else and it is changing their lives in a way you know like those teeny tiny moments where they saw your video the reflection happened and it just hits them for years they were in this rut and now 
those you know like i i don't think you need big grand moments those teeny tiny reflections as well can really change your life and i think you are leading the way and giving people those moments to actually reflect and and feel good about themselves so that's a phenomenal thing j2 uh, uh, thank you thank you so much that really means a lot because it's funny because i never started dancing with the intention that i'm going to inspire fat people right? right or like i didn't get back to dancing being like oh i'm going to do this to inspire fat people Yeah. I've always wanted to do it because I wanted to inspire people in in like certain way possible or create an impact on them in in like a certain way make them feel a certain way. Yeah. I think like through art you always want to make feel you know like make a person feel through your performance or or through your dance and I think for me it's always about the feeling um whether it's a feeling of joy happiness a deep you know underlying message yeah. um but like now it's expanded into you know people who are overweight and yeah. like you know who who just want to you know just get up and dance because now they've had the confidence so i feel like um i feel like sometimes life journey takes you in a way where you don't even plan it but but this is what it is now yeah yeah and seeing someone so free so so in his own element so confident i think through your work you people who observe you they get a chance to be themselves you know they get inspired they they f- they feel more free looking at a free soul like you another thing that i wanted to ask you you know you are a youngster um just 24 and you have built such a massive following on instagram more than 30k followers over there on your youtube which you just started this year um you have like 10k subscribers in such such a short time do you do you ever find yourself comparing your art with any other artist surprisingly never uh, wow. uh it just it just been like i don't know why um maybe maybe that just an you know that that just an inner value that i've always had um of like you know not comparing but at least like with something like dance and art um i just feel comparison will actually kill you because um I think like especially in like a field like dance you are your own USP in the sense that um what you can do nobody else can do and what somebody else can do you cannot do so like there is no reason to compare it's like comparing you know two 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 people in the same industry but with completely separate skill sets and um I think I think it's just so important to respect uh other other dance styles other you know other unique you know selling points that people have and learn from them inspire from, you know like get inspired from them but 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 i think like most importantly at the end of the day it's it's just super important to understand who you are as an artist and i think once you understand who you are as an artist and understand you know um what differentiates you from everybody else there's no reason to compare or compete you know right. there's like there's this one thing i say you know there's one thing i love to say the most right which is um you know go after being different don't go after being the best because when you go after being the best you're kind of competing right when you when you are different you don't need to compete with anybody people will come to you for what you provide and you will be the only person who provide that right and then that's when like that's when will be your niche and like that's how you can capture on like a whole huge audience over there um so yeah man I, like i don't think the value of comparison has ever uh, come up I've also seen uh, people who who often compare themselves as artists to other artists and that most most of the times results in unhappiness because you're always kind of seeing that oh you know that's what's better about him or her and this is what I lack and then you'll only see you know there are great points because again as you said people only highlight like the you know like the good things you know people don't often you know highlight like the low lights or like you know they're not always vulnerable enough on social media to kind of show their weaknesses and um just 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 you know just seeing that and just keep on comparing with that you will find yourself in a place that oh you know these people have so many good things about themselves as an artist and i like and i lack so much and i think that's when it will kill you as an artist because you won't be able to find yourself you won't be able to like know what's good about yourself and like you like yourself as an artist and i think um that's when you kind of you know lose hope feel demotivated and maybe even you know stop 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 being an artist you know like stopping an artist anyway i've seen so many people just stop creating art because they think they're not good enough or they think you know like they've always felt like they've just compared themselves to other people and like it's not resulted in like the best way possible true yeah so i think comparison as a value is something that you should always avoid having
never go I, back yeah. i i totally totally agree with you j2 on that and i loved your point that go after being different and not being the best it's so counter intuitive uh, because everywhere you go everyone is saying give your best be the best be the best this is this is that that and being best is so subjective it is so subjective but when you find your usp when you feel within your heart that you have given your best efforts not in terms of uh, this is the best amongst other people because that's when the comparison starts to happen and also also here's the thing about comparison comparison can only happen when the base skill is same like uh, a apple can be compared to an apple apple cannot be compared to an orange every <laughs> one of us though they are fruits <laughs> though they are fruits right yeah. though we all are human beings but what truly shapes us are the experiences are the reflections are the books are the conditioning that we have been through what's what's your usp j2 what's your usp well you know it's it's very interesting i did not know okay okay and I still you don't know. compare that's that's like ninja level uh, skills <laughs> I, i don't know i just did not know my usp uh until people told me what it was you know mm. so like i have to sometimes saying where like you do not need to know everything when you go start out right just go do it you know you will find your path you will find your way eventually you can't just like sit you know you can't just sit at a desktop screen and be like oh this is my vision this is my plan and this is my usp it's like yes you can plan for a bit but you can't plan for everything because you don't know where life takes you or like or like what the real world is all about so um so how it happened with me was i just did what i love to do any which way which is just to go out and dance mm-hmm. um and like i think like just the sense of joy that you get like you know for performing for an audience or performing for a crowd and you know making them feel a certain way is something that attracted me the most so i always just did that and then people consistently came back and you know said that like oh this guy has govinda like expressions or like this guy is so heavy but uh, he dances like you know like fat is never a thing in him you know or like this guy dances with crazy amount of energy that i've not really seen with somebody else so i feel like these you know when people like started telling me these things consistently i'm like acha to ye hoga you know <laughs> cuz like cuz i never to cuz like to be honest i thought dance was just until college i didn't know it could be mm-hmm. i didn't believe it could be a real world thing um I don't know maybe because I come from a business background Sindhi family you know who who thought like okay you know yeah this is my passion but like you know can I be financially sustainable I think that's very important as a profession you know I just don't want to like blindly go follow my passion be like yeah go follow your passion and then like you realize you can't sustain financially so so like I definitely wanted to follow my passion but I also wanted to find a realistic way to live it yeah. and um while I was just dancing consistently I saw a lot of people telling this to me that oh you know that you know said these points consistently and like not just the same group of people different groups of people said these same points consistently and they said govinda like expressions um fat guy who can dance person who has high energy and i feel like okay you know these three are like my top three things i've received consistently and like that's what you know separates me or differentiates me from like a lot of other people and then now once i know i think like been maybe just a little over a year since i like kind of know and believe this in myself and then like that and like just knowing this has allowed me to take my journey a little bit further and now like mold it into a career so i think like like understanding and knowing my usp was like super important before like actually building a career out of this 100% 100% and and what's fascinating about that is um a youngster or or, or a beginner who's starting their journey usually they don't don't know what's their usp and because of that they try to totally emulate someone else and they start comparing they lose their own unique self that's why for beginners i would say you know sometimes your creativity can get a bit tainted when you f- watch a lot of content just go out there create things that comes from your heart people will tell you as you said like my follow up question through that was going to be how do you find your usp and i think you pretty much nailed the answer that people will tell you what's your usp first start creating the art you know right overcome that hurdle i think uh, i usually yeah i i usually term it as beginner's dilemma that <laughs> yeah you 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 spend so much time comparing trying to put your best foot out there your foot will become the best in your own realm but you have to start creating stuff first overcome Correct. that hindrance first 
you know um and and what i love about your upbringing is your mom i remember you mentioning about her that how she she believed in this notion that learning happens um, outside a lot of life learning i should say happens outside of the classroom and she she pushed you guys to participate in so many things so definitely your mom's support was there for you how did you convince your dad that this is a this is a career that i want to pursue and i can make money because see one of the thing with parents is they don't want they don't want the anything bad for you they want the best for you but their yeah. best may not be the best for you so right. how did you convince your dad that because your dad is a businessman how did you convince him that this is where i want to go and this is what i want to pursue and i i can still make a sustainable living out of it yes <laughs> So for the first time I ever wanted to try this out as a career yeah. um I didn't have to convince him my mom convinced him because, Okay because mom, mom, mom is the trump card yeah. Mom is the trump card you know when one parent doesn't listen go to the other one and like you know make a puppy dog face right, right. No but, <laughs> but but on a realistic note um I didn't have to convince uh, dad in the first one mm-hmm. um like I convinced mom and mom was very supportive she like yeah just go out and do it Hmm. um like again i think i think also that support also really came easily simply because um i feel very lucky or i feel very blessed to come from hmm. a, a well to do you know like a well to do family financially in the sense that there's no financial pressure that like oh we've invested so much in education now we need returns right now hmm. right um, hmm. so i think like so maybe like that you know that kind of um, you know like i come from a very different background um you know sometimes people like don't have the similar background and obviously their struggles are a lot more you know it's not the same it's nothing comparable to like what my struggle would be but like their struggles are a lot more because now they are under financial pressure and like that that and and still achieving your passion is like i think is a much bigger deal for like me it was a little more easy because i had to convince mom and mom was very supportive about it i think when dad got convinced was uh, dad really got convinced when he attended the first ever class that i taught in pune and then he attended the first class and he saw it was a full class and he said and then he saw i made more than a starting like like i made 2x the amount of a starting level person salary um from one class which is a 2 hour class on a sunday and <laughs> dad is like okay <laughs> you know scope kya hai abhi the next question is acha theek hai you know like basic salary to aa jayegi har mahine you know like your basic salary will come every month iska bhi scope kya hai you know cuz like dad would be like acha bhi like to you know you know 30 40000 aa gaye abhi isko 30 40 crore mein kaise banaoge right, <laughs> so, right, like, right. so like you know like 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 that's the kind of future level like he always wants to push me to think so mom like pushes me to think big in terms of vision dad pushes me to like think big in terms of business in terms of how you going to scale to the next level so i think like that kind of support from both mom and dad has been like very 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 fortunate i think like i'm extremely blessed for this support i don't think i would have been able to do even like half the things i'm doing right now without having them and i think you need both i think you need both as you said in your in your answer that you want to pursue your passion but money is also important you have to think about growth you have to think about scaling and especially especially in in your home it's such a beautiful upbringing that your mom is supporting your vision your your transformational journey and dad is like okay that is all good <laughs> enough let's scale it let's how 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 should we scale it right and that is yeah. i i think that is very um keeping it realistic because art cannot happen when you are hungry you need food in your stomach you need a basic level uh, of living you know you need all of those things if you just about art then things might get a bit tough for you how would you um Or what advice will you give to the youngsters when it comes to when they are beginning, right? When they are beginning their career in any art form, what should they primarily think about? They should should they think about more how to scale it, how to earn money? That should be their primary importance, or how to get better at their art? Yeah. So I think so. I think like there are two separate sets of advices that I would give. Um, I think the first set of advice goes to those people who have support from the family, because once you have support. Mm. everything becomes easy like i promise you like it 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 turns you know tables turn 360 degrees 
actually no that's one circle like tables turn 180 degrees <laughs> 180 degrees <laughs> tables turn 180 degrees uh, yeah. so like that becomes so easy and i think yeah. like that's the kind of set that i've been like you know fortunate to be part of like like for them i'll just you know be like now like you have the resources on your hand you know there's like no excuse to make you just go out there and like just try you know once you keep trying you will get better once you get better you start to understand how you are different from other people right and then you know maybe give yourself maybe one year or like two years or like you know give yourself a realistic deadline if you are able to crack something within that deadline and you think you can make this a professional career go for it you know if you don't think you can do that you think you need more time get a side job you know yeah. like do something on the side and like make this your like like you know make this your hustle um, yeah. i think like for the like you know for the different set of advice for people who do not have support the first thing i would be is like it secure self financially because um because because like again like as you said you you know it's very hard to be an artist when you're very hungry you know and like you want your mind to be free so like when you've secured yourself financially in some way or the other right um then you can like devote some time to your art and like once you devote some time to your art um like the first thing i would always do is like find yourself as an artist like who are you really as an artist and like what you're really providing to the world um how are you different and you know what will make you stand out you know what will make you separate yourself from the rest of the you know crowd and like the show shower and like the noise out there right. and because i think once you separate yourself from from everybody that's what will sell you as an artist right. um um yeah man so i think i i think if you don't have support get a job secure yourself yeah. financially and then devote time it's very crucial to be financially mentally free so yeah. that you can like devote time to your art like in a very in like a very calm true. and peaceful way true. yeah and what i love about that answer that you differentiated a lot of times people just say oh pursue your art get a side job but it's tough and you and you differentiated two aspects of it like with family support things can get a bit easier but people who don't have family support they have financial pressure first try to get financially thoda free and then try to pursue your art because only yeah. then you'll be really be able to give your best you'll be able to actually provide value i i definitely agree with you now people may have different opinions from me yeah. um no doubt about it and like like i will respect every single opinion that other people have but but what i truly believe is that if you if you really want to find a way to you know you know live your passion um try to try to be a little more realistic you know yeah. uh, because i feel like when people are so passionate about something they become very tunnel visioned being like oh you know i have to do this i have to do this i have to do this you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and like you being tunnel visioned you cannot see beyond and i feel like that will curb you as an entrepreneur or like that will curb you as like a freelancer artist or like whoever you're trying to be right yeah. uh, so i feel like the minute you can think beyond the tunnel that's when you'll have opportunities to explore yourself in different spaces that you didn't even think you would probably like you know be doing right now yeah um, so yeah. So yeah so definitely so I feel like if you if you if, if you really trying to pursue dance as a career like art as a career uh, you know um, go find yourself um, yeah. find a way to be financially secure and have a realistic plan you know 100% uh, and also I'll add one more thing to it if you really because I fa- found myself very lazy like my mind somehow optimizes thing in my head that oh you can do this it's very easy you'll figure it out and if I don't have an accountability buddy it it just it, it's very tough for me so what i did after i spoke with j2 that okay I'll, i'll start a podcast i i promised him but it was just between me and him and my mind was like oh it's just between you and him you don't have to prove anything <laughs> <laughs> the next step i took was let me go out there and actually put it in the real world um and i created an a video on instagram and said that you know what i don't know abc or the p, even the p of a podcast from producer's perspective but i'm right. going to learn it and this was back in june and now here i am in september no today is august august 30th and mm. uh, here i am recording my third episode and that's where the magic happened you know <laughs> so let's go no and i think you're a perfect example of you know someone you know who who found a way to pursue something um professionally as a career but also are doing this as a side gig or a side hustle yeah. and like obviously once once this becomes a bigger deal you know you might have the potential or like the or like the capacity to even do this full time so i think like i think i think you're the perfect example of someone like you know who's 
living the entrepreneurial dream, but is also trying to find a way to kind of, you know, survive in the world financially yeah. by like, because like, let's be real, we have bills to pay. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. We have bills to pay. <laughs> Your I, rent is not free. hundred percent. I trust me, I wouldn't be able to do this if I did not have my job. It would be super tough the way I'm doing it, getting all the equipments, trying to come up with ideas, the luxury that I have, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I had bills on my mind all the time. To be honest, I personally, as I'm doing it, the thought that comes into my head is I'm actually enjoying both. I'm enjoying my job as well. But I always did not want to confine myself in one role that, oh, Amit, he's an engineer. I, I wanted to always expand beyond that and add multi, become more multifaceted. And this podcast provides me the opportunity to, to be that. The joining Garb Dance provided me the opportunity to become, explore my, not dream per se, but explore another facet of me of that, oh yeah, I can dance. I can dance in a team as well. So it's just more of creating a life full of experiences. And it's not just that, you know, like I hate my job. That's why I'm doing it. I'm trying to find an escape. No, I love my job, but I also am adding something more to it because I don't have my family here in US. I have so much of free time. Why not invest it productive? and um, pick up the brains of such such awesome people you know what I saw or, or what you explain about comparison a lot of times when you compare you don't collaborate right yeah, you, yeah. it's huge it's huge. You'll always yeah. treat them as as someone who you want one up against but there is power in collaboration and you are one of the perfect examples because you have collaborated with so many artists Talk to me about the power of collaboration and how it actually has helped you create much better art for the viewers out there. Yeah, definitely. I think almost every single video I've done is, is a collaboration. Um, yeah. I don't think I've done even one solo video, though I would like to do it. Right. Uh, but I think every video I've done is a collaboration. And uh, I think these collaborations have shaped me uh, as an artist in a certain way or the other, right? And I like throw some like light upon like how it has. I think the first way, uh, first way is learning, which is the ability to actually learn from how somebody else choreographs. Now, like say doing the you know, 25 to 30 videos, I'm like, I'm not sure the exact number, but I think it would be over 20 for sure. Um, or, you know, like, like doing that many videos, which means like 20 different people now, like seeing how 20 different people choreograph um, while choreographing with them is just a huge learning experience in its own. Like what beats to the hit? Or, you know, what do they think about the music or like, you know, what, what message they're trying to give through like a certain piece of, you know, body movement with a certain line of choreography or like with a certain line of music. Right. And I think, um, I think like, that's the, that's like number one, which is like in learning to like a whole new level, which I don't think I would have been ever exposed to if collaboration wasn't the thing. Um, the second thing is, is, uh, building a network, which is, now you automatically have a much larger network of people that you, now you, now, now first of all, you know, 20 more people and 20 more people know you. <laughs> so, yeah. so like that's huge in itself. Like that's, you know, you, because like now you already have 20 people as, and like, like now that becomes a community, right? Yeah. Where like say tomorrow, if you want to, you know, reach out to somebody or like, you know, any of the people you've collaborated with before to kind of work on a project later in the future, the likelihood of they agreeing to it will be really high. So I think like that way your network really improves a lot and like it really increases a lot. And I think like a third big, uh, you know, benefit or advantage that you really get from collaboration is, um, is that you get a chance to, uh, you know, put yourself in front of a much larger audience in a very short period of time. Hmm. Uh, because now you are exposing, um, you know, yourself to your collaborators network. Uh, hmm. And you are exposing your collaborator to your network. So there's like this cross promotion of like, you know, putting each other in like front of a larger audience together. Right. And um, so I think like sometimes when you start from scratch as an artist, it's really hard because like yeah. now you don't only just have to focus on your art. Now you have to focus on like, okay, you know, how can I push this out to as many people? How can I get more people to recognize my work? Or like, you know, how can I build my marketing? How can I build my branding? How can I, you know, push my following up there? And I feel like these are some of the questions that really people kind of question or really think about. Um, but like now when you collaborate automatically, now you don't have to worry about, you know, the branding, the marketing, the, you know, the administrative work that really goes in, like putting yourself out there. Now you just worry about true art. 
now you just worry about creating something that's really epic or like the most epic thing ever and like you're automatically putting both people to a much larger network in a very short period of time i think i think the fourth advantage i don't think i've experienced this as much but you know like sometimes maybe to an extent of experience where it kind of brands you as an artist in the sense mm-hmm. that you know you doing collab like for example like getting a chance to collaborate with the number one youtubers in india mm-hmm. which is team notch yeah. um you know people people have been like oh this guy has collaborated with uh, sonal and nicole from team notch so it's so it so like people automatically you know viewed me as a brand a little differently from other artists already and like mm-hmm. this didn't happen you know this didn't happen on a big scale but right. like this happened like with a few people where like they kind of mentioned it so kind of to an extent it kind of brands you as an artist or brands you as a person as well so i think that would be like a fourth benefit or advantage that you get so but i think collaboration is the way to go about it you don't get anything competing from now on and competition is for sports <laughs> <You know? laughs> no that that's a great yeah. point that competition is yeah. for sports out there and yeah. here in real life collaborate i think in nature as well you know the tree doesn't grow on its own it needs sun it needs water it needs a caregiver <laughs> very true the nature supports collaboration then who are we to defy it <laughs> right, <laughs> we right, should right. use very the true. power of collaboration and 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 as very as true. you very well pointed out but Correct, yeah. sometimes when you're starting up right j2 a lot of times these big youtubers might not collaborate with you and they would be like we don't see enough value to collaborate with you how to traverse that and when you were starting up how did you approach other big artists to to, to collaborate with you yeah it was it was actually very interesting so so i'll tell you how uh, so i think like the biggest one right now would have, would be team natch and really how that happened when like the first or the second video went viral um eventually um, i think what happened was um, sona commented on one of my videos okay. saying now i want to dance with you right Ooh. and she's and she's a very Ooh. nice person right so like she's yeah. a very sweet humble genuine person both sonal and nicole both are like literally like angels on earth and you know, <laughs> she commented i am like sonal commented now to i have to slide into a dm <laughs> i wrote like this long long dm to her nice. being like sonal you know let's whatever whatever like i don't remember what i wrote but i wrote something very nice obviously i wrote something very genuine um so i think like that's how it happened so i think like initially um a lo- like the first few collaborations actually came my way in the sense that you know a lot of people wanted to collaborate because maybe right. like the first video went viral so i think like there it was a bit fortunate but but again like you know as you kind of you know grow, grow further and as you're trying to sustain yourself as an artist Uh, you won't have people coming to you consistently you know mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you have to go out there and like go reach out to people as well so yeah. um, so like recently i found myself um, you know reach out to a lot of people and yes you you know like sometimes you don't get replies so yeah. there are sometimes i've i've dm people and like i've not gotten a reply and I'm, and 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 they know who i am like okay. i know they know who i am because because some of the people in the dance community like again it's a very close knit dance community and i know she you know like he or she knows who i am because of because of other friends who've told me right right so um but like but like you know sometimes you don't get a reply and that's yeah. okay you know yeah. it's yeah. totally okay uh, for you to get a no you know that's part of the journey so it's yeah. not like everything's been cherry on the top and like everything's been like you know oh my god this is so easy no like you yeah. do get a lot of no's and yeah. like after reaching out to people i have realized that that it's okay for you know someone to say no like it's okay for someone to not collaborate um you just have to like you know find a way hustle your way through reach out to you know the people that you genuinely want to collaborate with and True. make it happen if it happens great if it doesn't happen you know just just yeah, you just move on and and and, yeah, and one of the one on. of the cool element of it is you reach out to multiple people you don't put all your hopes and energy on on one person yeah. you reach out to multiple people use the power of probability maybe few people <laughs> would reply it's also and, like diversifying your risk you know exactly uh, diversifying right. your risk um start it's it's not like you have to get the big names when you're starting up find another other artists who are passionate about their art who are doing some good work they don't have too much of a followers just collaborate start building up your portfolio that when you actually pitch yourself to a bigger names you have a huge arsenal behind you backing up that oh this is what this guy is all about let me collaborate with him another thing that really fascinated me and that was because i was on the garf team i observed you closely the the 
the journey that you and Angela and the other other team members or the team leaders they took us on starting from the first day of team orientation and how you focused heavily on the team culture being a 25 years old on the team and you were like 23 i think it was so fascinating for me to actually observe you and see how detail oriented you were in terms of processes you had these everything planned out you had the script written you had uh, the budget you had a lot of things the the vision for production what i saw was a great leader working with a great team of people what i'm curious to know is what does being a good leader means to you oh wow this is such a deep question yeah i think i think i define leadership as a service i think as a leader you're always serving your and you're serving them to grow you're serving them to uh, be happy in the organization um, you're serving them every possible way and support them in every possible way they need your support so, so it's like i think that's how i view a good leader like if he's there in the mindset to serve um i think he'll kick ass if he's there in the mindset to like oh you know i'm the boss and you're supposed to listen to me that like 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 sure you know you may succeed but i don't think your team members will really have a very good a very good experience yeah 100% 100% i feel you you kind of went through this journey talk, take us through that journey like what happened when you were at zehir what were the challenges that you faced and when finally on the gulf team you were like no i'm going to switch this around and give my team a better experience and also ensure that i am enjoying this leadership role i think the journey starts one step before i was captain of zehir uh, which was when i was a team member of uh, the 2017 uh, usc zehir and mm-hmm. i was captain of 2018 usc zehir um so i think like that's when the journey really started and 2017 wasn't a very good year for usc zehir uh, we didn't i think we placed at only one competition our team was all over the place um, it was just not a very good year and um, a huge part of it was because we had four captains So instead of mm. a two captain structure there were four captains mm. which means four leaders which yeah. means four different conflicting visions you mm. know which means four different decision making abilities and yeah. like who's steering the organization in what way right so i feel like because of that a lot of things you know went haywire and like you know people were not on the same page um it's really hard to get four people with like strong personalities uh, to you know be on the same page and i feel like that was the place where i learned the most um alongside that i was also part of isec which is a leadership development nonprofit um which is completely youth run so only from you know like age 18 to age 30 you can be part of the organization and like here you learn a lot of leadership skills um um so i think like that year 2017 was like literally like the most powerful learning experience for me where i learned a lot about leadership so in the sense that first i learned everything what went wrong in usc is ahead of 2017 like whatever the four captains did a lot of things went wrong team mm-hmm. culture was off people were not motivated uh, you know our performance was low uh, people like you know wanted to quit and um, the captains were not on the same page you know um, so i feel like there i learned my biggest lesson is like um, you need to have two things as a leader one is vision and the second thing is decision making ability like there needs to be an ultimate decision maker like for example like if there's a conflict you know that comes up comes upon in the organization who's solving this conflict and like who is the ultimate decision maker in a conflict right yes like conflict resolution is important where you kind of meet to consensus and like kind of discuss things mutually but like if you know there's like a 50 50% vote right then like who's making the ultimate decision you know right. which which way is the organization we steer in so i think like those are two big things i learned is vision and Um, and like clear decision making power and like just being on the same page with everybody right um so that's what i learned from 2017s ahead isec oh <laughs> we got punched in our face for like three semesters consecutively because we built a team for three semesters consecutively it was me and my brother and like my brother's co-founder miles i was just a founding member it was founded my it, it was founded by my brother and his friend called miles they mm-hmm. founded the isec usc chapter right. which is the leadership development non profit right and we built a team three times and after the third time everybody left you know Ooh. like the first time everybody left second time everybody left third time everybody left and i think like um that just taught me everything about like you know like 
everything about how do you really run an organization? Um, you know, how do you have a purpose? How do you come up with a vision? How do you build a culture? You know, how do you inject habits, values, and behaviors in a team? Um, the question like, you know, how do you form goals? You know, how do you create strategies to reach your goals? How do you create tasks? Right. You know, so all these things, you know, like all these basic things of like management was, you know, like things that I learned at ISEC. Um, but then I realized, then I learned two big more lessons. Like one is empathy Ooh. is like learning to empathize with every single person Two, or actually three big lessons, right? Two is leading by example, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like, if you want your team to do it, you do it first, you know, you show them how to do it. Right. And you inspire them to do it. Don't sit on a chair, be like, Hey, do it. Right. That's not going to happen. If you want them to do 10 pushups, you do 10 pushups. If you want them to do full splits, you do full splits. If you want them to do a full out run through, you do a full out run through. Right. And I think that will inspire them to consistently go up, you know, like go out and push themselves even more. Cause when they see you're pushing yourself, they'll push themselves. So that's like the second big lesson, which is leading example. Empathy I learned was, I still remember there was this, uh, there was a girl called Devangshi and like, I had called in for a meeting. She had uh, a midterm the next day. Um, mm -hmm. She like, like this wasn't even her role, but like she was like helping out with production yeah. uh, because she's very creative and she's an amazing designer. Yeah. So she was helping out like building like some, you know, art and craft, like, like production, like props for our stage performance. I called her to a certain place. Things, you know, things changed in like the heat of the moment. Like, like, like me and my captain, we went to a completely different place and, you know, we forgot to inform Devangshi to come to the new location. She called me. She's like, where are you? I'm already at this location. I'm like, oh, lol, we forgot to tell you, uh, you know, just come over here. Right. We are like, we've like moved over here. And I think like when I said, oh, lol, I think that pissed her off a lot. You know, that she's like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> yeah. I have a midterm tomorrow. This is not my responsibility. You know, I'm giving my time to like the organization to do this. This guy calls me location, didn't bother to inform me to go to the next location, tells me, oh, lol, on the phone. And like, you know, like, like, there's no reason for me to contribute anymore. So I think that was like my second biggest learning lesson, which is empathy, you know, just like learning to empathize with people and like respecting their time, respecting the space. Those are like the two, two, two big ones. The third big one was, was accountability. Uh, accountability. So okay. accountability, I was extremely crappy as a leader, <laughs> like when I was captain of USC's ahead 2018 in keeping my team accountable to meet goals. So like, you know, all the big things, you know, aside, which is like, you know, like I found myself very transformational, which was like, Oh, you know, be very inspirational, be very motivational. And like, you know, like instill confidence in them, you know, give them these goosebumps, to like go out there and like kill it. And, you know, like, you know, like tell them what they are, what they could be you know, like, you know, what we could achieve at the end of the year and like, you know, what they could transform into as a better version of themselves. So those are the things that like I found myself being very good at. What I didn't find myself be good at is like, all right, you know, what are the goals and let's get it done, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and like, maybe because I didn't know how to do it, you know, maybe because I was, you know, you know, I didn't know how to keep them accountable. And then I saw that my production costumes manager was not, you know, like didn't do his job properly. And like, it's not his fault. It's, it's, it's leaders. It's fault. the leaders. Like, yeah. It's yeah. never, it's never the team's fault. Like, you know, if your team's performing well, it's your leaders, it's, it's your, it's your leader's victory. If your team is not performing well, it's your leader's fault, not your team's fault. Mm. Right. Like there's like, like I always believe in a top to bottom culture, right. True. Uh, because the way you behave, the way you act is the way your team is going to behave and act. Mm. And I think like, that's when, um, that's when I learned like my last big lesson as, as a leader that like, okay, you know, that all these you know, big, big talks are cool, you know, to motivate and inspire people, but realistically it needs to come down to like, okay, cool. What are the goals you've achieved? Yeah. What have you not achieved? And how can I support you achieve that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> then like when we came to Garv, we learned all of these things, you know, we learned leadership is a service. We learned leadership is leading by example. We learned it's important to empathize. We learned um, you know, it's important to people, keep people accountable. Like, I don't know, like so many more things, right? It's so many more things. Like we learned how to build value systems and like uh, behaviors and habits. And like, after like taking all of these experiences and like failures and learnings, uh, we just compiled it, you know, together into Garv and we're like, cool, you know, we will try to build it out. And I think like Garv was like, probably like, 
like like our best performance as leaders and despite that we still had so many you know <laughs> despite that despite all of this we had so many like you know failures and learnings yeah, you know nothing yeah. was like perfect so you can imagine like how much we also grew from the gurb experience as well 100% I, i i truly feel it's a journey um you you keep learning you keep growing through it and uh, to be honest i whatever you said over here right like empathy leading with example uh, accountability i when i actually look back everything like there are so many instances that come to my mind where you actually did all of these things even though it was tough for you going through run throughs with us with f- going full out you would get exhausted but you would still push yourself because you knew that everyone else is somewhere watching you and leaders are always being watched because they are at the top of hierarchy there is there is certain level of respect that they they are given and people observe them they observe what they are doing good but they are also observing what they are not doing good and i think i think it's so important to lead with example um, be more empathetic and 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 especially accountability like i think what really worked for you and for the team was um the level of clarity that you guys brought with your planning the level of communication i think that was one of the highlights for me that uh, you personally i saw communicate so much with the team that uh, this is what is the team culture this is how we want to go ahead this is what uh, the the value is don't screw the crew i mean that was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, somewhere my heart sank. I was like, "Is it so? Or should I take a reconsider?" <laughs> oh my! But but yeah, dude. Like like I personally feel that you guys yeah. address see a lot of times to disempower a conflict that that is arising is to completely address it, addressing the elephant in the room, and that can take away the power of a, a potential conflict or a potential dispute. and i i saw that you guys were on point with it and whenever you guys weren't you guys made sure that you heard what the other person has to say i think i think i think the key to leading a successful team in terms of happiness yeah uh, or satisfaction out of this because mm-hmm. it's not always possible for everyone to be happy all the time yeah. is like setting clear expectations 100%, uh, 100%. or like you know kind of predicting what are the risks yeah. or what could go wrong yeah and then finding a solution for it already beforehand obviously you cannot predict everything yeah but like you just consistently keep on realigning expectations and as anticipating like, as like the, the process goes forward yeah, yeah 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 anticipating the problem that's that's a huge thing but one of the things that i notice in one of the interviews that you get and especially because i have personally seen you so confident so communicative um i have seen girls just being going gaga when j2 is in the hey. room <laughs> so i have personally seen that like and, and you always shy away from it you're like don't don't uh, i i want to <laughs> i'm too shy for such situation <laughs> <laughs> yeah but in, in one of your interviews you you mentioned that uh, one of the seminal books um, that played a huge role in your life is uh, how to win friends and influence people how did the lessons or which lessons from that um, book uh, in in like two or three lessons if you can throw out that really helped you grow in your career as a dancer as well as as a leader right so i think so i think i like i'll talk about like one big lesson that really changed the way i spoke to people yeah um was was like a situation that if you if you really want somebody to change a bad habit mm. you know, and this often times happens um like for example like say if you're running a team or you're managing a group mm. of people mm. mm-hmm. um say somebody's coming late right and you want to tell them that yo this is not cool right yeah. um sometimes it's important to you know give your example of how you've messed up in the past and like how that's been detrimental to certain situations and then inspire them from your example and tell them like you know this is what's happened in the past with me and i have changed you know but i really want to you know empower you or really want to encourage you to create the same change so that you don't go through the same journey i did right, right? and i feel like when you say that it makes the person feel a lot more relatable or it makes the person feel like oh you know this guy is not pointing fingers at me first he's pointing a finger at himself yeah and after that also he's not pointing a finger at me <laughs> after that also he is like this is a situation now you decide 
you know? So I think like the minute you point fingers at people, that's when like, that's when people get pissed off. Like regardless of who the person is, what experience, like I think that's when people really get annoyed, right? So like the biggest thing I learned is like, if you're really trying to create change in somebody, uh, don't point fingers at them and don't point out their flaws. Bring mm-hmm. out your flaws or bring out someone else's flaws as an example if you've not gone through the same journey yeah. and then inspire them to like make their own decision to change. So that was like the biggest le- uh, journey I learned as a, um, as like a thing. And, and, the, and, and I think the other thing was also like in terms of communicating was, um, was, the, was like two big things in terms of like as a dance teacher, right? Um, one is saying sorry. You know, Ooh, I think it's oh okay. My God, that's a huge, you know? huge thing. It's yeah. huge. I mean, like, I think what I've seen in like a lot of leaders today is that they don't take feedback very well from the team members um, or they don't take feedback at all. And the second thing is that they don't say sorry for their uh, like false mistakes. So mm. I think like as a leader, if you make a mistake, it's okay. Just say sorry to your team and sure. be like, hey guys, I'm sorry I made a mistake. You know, forgive me for this, but let's move past this and like I hope you guys can you know accept my apology yeah. and like that's okay you know you don't have to be perfect as a leader like you are human too and you will make mistakes too you say sorry for your mistakes and you you know accept feedback from your team your team will respect you so much more because they'll realize that like oh you know this guy is not you know perfect this guy is like just one of us right? yes he just has yes. a different set of responsibility so I think like that's that's like a huge you know big thing that uh, the book like really taught. Yeah, that's that's so fascinating, J2, like how books can really transform us and especially how to win friends and influence people was one of my f- personal favorite books. So that's that's a great point. And that's a seminal book that I highly recommend that any youngster out there or anyone else who wants to work on their communication skills, their relationship building skills, you have to pick up that book. One of the things that I noticed, J2, is you mentioned that one of your few of your core values are being humble, humility, as well as learning from anyone. Can you talk to me about that? I think learning is always exciting because you come from different perspectives. Yeah. Um, so that has always excited me, whether like, like regardless of where it is, you know, just always kind of going out there and learning from as many people as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is, is like humility or like staying humble. Um, and I think like, that's just a, like, I think like the biggest lesson mom has taught me is like, don't let it get to your head. You know? <laughs> She's like, you are never too big or too small for anything. You yeah, know, yeah. you are just doing your job. And I think that's important for you to keep in mind. You know, you need to yeah. do your job best. And that's, that's all that matters. So I think like mom has always consistently like injected into us that don't yeah. let it get to your head. Because oftentimes like success in like however people like to define it, you know, it gets to people's heads and like that changes them as a person. And, <laughs> and like, and like, you know, mom always like, you know, kind of says that like, if you think you've reached the top, you know, and you don't think you can grow more, right. The only way is the way down. <laughs> Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no way for you to go even higher. <laughs> Mic drop mom. <laughs> <laughs> nice like you can only fall from there yeah if you have, you can if only you have reason, yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no way to go up there's only like the only way is yeah. down yeah so um so the idea is to always you know not let it get your head and just always keep learning and keep growing because yeah um, the only way is up, you know yeah no hundred percent hundred percent and i i personally think your mom is such a darling she she's gin two guinness record holder two guinness book record holder <laughs> and, right there, right here. yeah like right, right there and and she she i think uh during a conversation her topic comes out a lot because she she literally has given you life lessons that truly has shaped you and that's fantastic before i ask my last yeah. question j2 yeah. where can people find you online and they can really follow your work where are you at um, I'm the most active on Instagram. Okay. Um, what's, what's your handle? We'll obviously be sh- putting it in our show notes, but yeah. what's, what's your handle? Handle is Junior J2. Okay. That's J-U-N-I-O-R mm-hmm. and J2 as in J-E-T-H-U. Okay. Yeah. Junior J2. Yeah. J2, my last question for you is, if I give you a megaphone and you have to shout out one message or one lesson that you learned yeah. that you wish you n- had known this before, what would be it, it be? 
<laughs> all right if i had a megaphone i would shout this to the entire world <laughs> and like i would say your degree is not as valuable as you think it is <laughs> mm. that's the biggest thing i would say <laughs> because people like go and like you know try to get these degrees and i think like people have a lot more degrees and have less sense that's what like we're getting <laughs> towards you know <laughs> like realistically that's what we're kind of getting towards right and like yeah. sometimes like your degree like 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 i know maybe it matters for certain professions you know i don't want to like you know to do loud every single situation mm-hmm. but for most situations that i've seen uh, like even while hiring like my first job they didn't even ask me what school i went to you know mm-hmm. they didn't even ask me my grades i got my first job before i graduated you know most people get their jobs before they graduate yeah and so so like so i genuinely believe that the the idea of like a degree is not the most valuable thing in the world today you know people strive so much for it and people invest so much in it um but it's 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 not as valuable as people really consider yeah. i don't even know where my degree is kept like you know <laughs> like it really doesn't matter and i wish yeah. i knew that before i i like i genuinely I... wish i knew that before lovely um, lovely cuz life oh. is about journey and experiences and like 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 learning from different spaces i think life i think i think life is really an experience not just you know about you collecting degrees or like you collecting awards and trophies and stuff yeah yeah so youngsters please relax you have a lot of time <laughs> learn lessons try to be human first learn life lessons degree definitely yeah. has its place in certain areas but don't panic so much if something you have to drop out or if you have to do something else life right. teaches you a lot of things be a curious life learner all right guys so this guy is such an inspiration at such a young age bollywood keep an eye out because genius <laughs> jetu is coming <laughs> young inspiring youngsters who are working on their art he is building a studio for you guys to provide you the ultimate experience you guys would have noticed throughout our conversation the level of clarity he has and if he doesn't have the clarity on it the level of authenticity he has saying oh i don't know about this because i have <laughs> never been in that situation he yeah. is such a bundle of joy energy positivity confidence panache and not giving a damn attitude that we all can take a bit from it and learn and incorporate in our own lives rohit Jetwani aka Junior Jetu it has been such a pleasure to have you on the show thanks a lot for doing this it truly means a lot to me to you saying yes no thanks so much man i think you've inspired me and inspired many other people in many ways so thank you thank you so much to invite me on the show and i'm really excited we could do this together 100% thanks a lot jetu have a beautiful day 